Uh, good evening. Welcome to the March 5th Planning Board meeting for the City of Glens Falls. Um, a few items on our agenda this evening. We will start with the review of potential approval of the minutes from the February 6th meeting. We'll start with Mr. Landry. Any comments from you? No comments. No? Ms. Bowden? Ms. Mary? No comments. 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 I had none either. Um, I would make a motion that we approve the minutes as they were submitted. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Any opposed? Um, our first item on our agenda is old business. It's both site plan and architectural review uh, 24001 for 10 C's LLC, applicant representing the owner of South Street of Dreams LLC, tax map number 309.28-2-10, commonly known as 72 South Street. Um, they were here before seeking a sketch plan review. And I believe this is under old business, but I think that we've got some modifications to your previous application. If I'm... For the record, if you could just state your name. I'm Marcy Leventhal, Brittany Krakow. What can you tell us since you were here last? Um, well, I wasn't here last time, yes. but I have um, 20 years experience operating cannabis dispensaries. Mm -hmm. I began my career in 2003 in California and have operated in 19 states. So this is something somewhat familiar to me. And um, all of the you know general issues that we address related to the township, you know, we feel really confident that we can address at this location and um, you know that it would be a good central location for the business. Are you still at the 72 South? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, at this point um, you haven't gotten any changes to your application, is that correct? The application that you sent in before? So yep, it's, yep. It's still all the same. Place. Okay. Um, are we moving forward with review of that application and public comment? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if there's nothing else for you to add to it, um, you still are, there's no changes to the exterior of the building other than the, the colors that you submitted to us. Right. Um, the building's going white with black trim. Yes. And um, everything else stays just as is. There's no modifications to the outside. Uh, your signage is as you have presented it to us. It's a very small um, sign that just has the name of the business. <coughs> Um, the interior from, uh, I'm going from memory, mm -hmm. stop, right? <laughs> yep. nope. yeah. um, the only interior modifications that we got were just the, the interior vestibule and then the rest of the stuff that's the layout inside yep. um, the building. Um, all your deliveries will be at the back of the building um, and as we had discussed before, your deliveries come in small. Yes. No, it's not, yes, we're, we're not talking about no tractor trailers. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so outside of that, um, are there any questions from the board at this point before I open up the public comment? I know we reviewed quite extensively the application when we got it for sketch plan review and had gone over a lot of stuff. Is there any additional questions that anybody had? I, I think I have a quick question. I think there's still um, uh, maybe a maintenance issue on the back portion of the, of the property and the back of the building. Uh, and, and I think you're neighbor was going to let you guys park in a certain area or um so we have a couple spots in the back and then um the golden monkey was going to allow us one of their spots for um, either delivery parking and or employee parking okay. or um, but they were going to help us out with and that spots. area will be maintained as best as possible yes absolutely all right thank you Anything else? So I'm going to open up for public hearing and we will take a comment from the public. Um, we'll limit public comment to three minutes. So is there anyone who wishes to speak to the application for 10 C's LLC for 72 South Street um, as it was submitted to us previously? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, discussion amongst the board. How do we feel? We've, we've reviewed the application as it was submitted to us for site plan and architectural review. I think we went through everything fairly extensively in the sketch plan. Um, I don't think there was anything 
Did you have anything no, I mean, I think they responded to all the comments about the exterior. I assume that a separate sign application needs to be yes. put in, yeah. so that'll be... Similar to, similar to building a permit. And the only thing that occurred to me was the two benches out front, which look very nice, I think might be on a city sidewalk, so but I don't know. If they sit on a sidewalk of city property, they would apply for an encroachment permit. Right. But isn't that only <clears throat> if it's permanently attached? Correct. I mean, okay. If, they're, if it's so, movable, if it's movable furniture, it's... Yeah. I mean, sometimes people still get encroachment permits Correct. for the sandwich boards and tables, so it's a good right. practice to ask for an encroachment. Yeah. If you're going to leave them there... It's similar, to, uh, if it's similar to outdoor dining right. in the city. Right. So it's, it's an encroachment permit that gets renewed every year by the Common Council. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't have any other comments. No other comments. <laughs> okay. Maybe this isn't the time for this or not, but something that I was made aware of in the New York State law, and maybe this does not pertain to us, mm -hmm. but in a community of less than 20,000 people, mm -hmm. cannabis shops have to be more than 2,000 feet apart. Correct. Correct. So, how does this go with the application of these guys were here first? Because we have another one now that's within that. Correct. And that comes down to the Office of Canada's management has to approve this. We are we're giving any any potential approval is local authority only. And correct me if I'm wrong. Once this is done at the local level, then OCM gets to review it, and you wind up on their list of registrants. Correct. Correct. Yes. It's, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so the OCM essentially has final say who gets to move forward. I'm sure you guys are all aware there's been a plethora of litigation and they <coughs> have, I mean, we're in a sort of unique circumstance where we're not sure how it's gonna play out. Um, in our minds, you know, I don't know, if you guys probably learned this at the last meeting, but Brittany is a resident here yeah. and, um, you know, is really excited about the possibility of doing business here. and. There's a possibility still that we could get that license, so we wanted to see it through um, because we don't know until they make the announcement. So right. we're in communication right. with them. We passed muster and were licensed actually through the card process well over a year ago. Right. So now it just becomes an issue, I it's guess. It's just location. Well, yeah, it's location, but it's also like, who qual yeah, it's qualifications, location, right. yeah, yeah. And that was my research that I did, and it specifically says the location of the licensed premises must be approved by the Office of Can Office of Cannabis Management um, as part of the dispensary site plan and comply with local zoning ordinances. So we give approval, but it's subject to right. New York State Office of Cannabis Management approving the location. If they don't approve the location, you can't open it. Correct. That's correct. correct. Yes. And yeah. you've researched that and you feel comfortable you meet all the requirements? Oh, absolutely. Right. It's just something that's sort of out of our hands right now because they have this new queuing system and there's two separate groups that were licensed. And I mean, I don't want to bore you with the details because I could be here for like six hours talking about how this has evolved, but um, suffice to say it's subject to their approval and we're just waiting to hear what their stance will be. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. That answer that? Is there any no, so that we could go through this whole process and they could just say. Right, and the, and the applicant has gone through the process and spent the money yeah. and the planning. Yeah. And That's the correct. And the that is yes. correct. Yep. <laughs> That's a discussion for another day. <laughs> <coughs> so have you already started the review process for that site with the state? Yes. I mean, we've notified them, but we can't get approval until this initial prop. We just don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, they have this queuing system, but some of the names don't match that, or the, the notification to the municipality doesn't match necessarily the names in the queuing system. And um, we're just, they're, and they're processing 400 applications, but only issuing 250 licenses. So there's just a lot of like nebulous information that we won't know until they make, they, they indicated to us that that would be, um, that they would announce that either last Friday or this coming Friday, whether or not that actually happens. Sure. Well, we know it didn't happen last Friday, but yeah, you know um, right. we're hopeful, but we don't know. So if you get approval from the state, then any 
anyone coming in after you has to be the 2,000 feet away. Correct, and it would be the same situation With for, the, yes. The other applicant is yeah. not here. He Correct. gets approval first from New York State. Theoretically, yes. Okay. There are other factors, mm -hmm. but yes. Okay. In short, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, with respect to Seeker, I would classify this as a type two action as its replacement rehab or reconstruction of the structure or facility in kind on the same site. Therefore, no further action is required by the board. Okay. Then I would make the motion that the Falls Planning Board acting as the Board of Architecture and Site Plan Review hereby grants architectural and site plan approval for the project identified as 10 C's LLC as the applicant representing the owner, South Street of Dreams LLC, um, for the property located at 72 South Street as presented at the meeting of, we started in, what was the first meeting? First meeting I have, it was January. January, yes. January. January and of 5 March 2024. Right. Can I have a second? Second. Um, we can roll call. Commissioner Subdivision for Anthony and Sandra Poulos, Arian Industrial Corporation Trustees of Tax Map Number 302.12-7-12-13-14, and 14, commonly known as 217 to 219 and 221 Bay Street, respectively, uh, seeking approval of a lot line adjustment between the lots, parcel A, parcel number 302.12-7-12, and parcel B, 302.12-7-13, to increase the lot size of parcel A and alleviate the encroachment on the existing structure. The lot line adjustment will merge parcel B and C into two lots to alleviate the encroachment on the existing residence. Pursuant to, uh, pursuant to City Code Chapter 192, Section 192-4, this application requires planning board review and approval. Good evening. Good evening. For the record. Sandra Polis. Anthony Polis. Explain to us what it is that you're looking to do. Um, basically, run the line between the two garages. Okay. And keep the garage, which has frontage on Douglas and Bay, as a separate lot and then um, remove the line between the other two. So basically you've got, the, the map that we have shows three, three yeah. parcels with dotted lines in between them. Yeah. And the idea is you're taking three lots and creating two. two. So the boundary line adjustment, while it falls under subdivision, it's not necessarily subdivision, this is a combination okay. of lots. Those, those two buildings I think were built before and then and, yeah. in the you 40s. Are about the wood frame garage and the masonry? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah. They, they were there prior to the lot subdivision, we're thinking. Right. Or repair uh, Like the 20s, I think. Okay. Right. And yeah, then the house. Three, the house three separate is, tax yeah. parcels that were never so they, combined. They, they, yeah. by the same they, they're not really three. If the old man knew he was paying on three lots and couldn't use them, he'd right. <laughs> go <going> over <laughs> his grave right now. Right. right. So the, the property line boundary that we have shown that's between lots A and B is the proposed that, that yes, heavy line. Yes, the heavy that's line. That's the heavy line. The, the dotted line, line is the existing. The okay. two dotted that's lines a, are the existing. It's a walkway between Got those it. two okay. buildings. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else that you'd like to add to the application? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. If you're going to be nice, I don't think so. <laughs> we, will, we will start with our architecture consultant. And 
and see what she has to offer. Thank you for explaining. I was not sure exactly what the new, but it's okay. it's going to be two lots. This rectangle right yes. here, which is going to be one garage that's on the corner lot, and yeah. then the house. And the house. That, that. Yeah. Okay. And they're, those lots are for sale. Yes. You're selling them? Yes. We have as these yeah. two. Yeah. Well, that you're proposing. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, you are in zoning district R2, and so there is a setback, a side yard setback of 15 feet that's required for structures. So the, the garages are pre existing, non conforming conditions. How does that then? go if we're proposing they're proposing a new lot line between the buildings which will now become a non-conforming condition that wasn't there before. It was not conforming before. Um, we're not right. making it more non-conforming. Right. It was right the, the property line went through one of the buildings. Correct. So actually, we're not, actually actually not, a couple of buildings. Actually two buildings. Well it yeah. went through this building right yeah. here. And the house. Too. Yep, right this one right mm -hmm. here. So the new lot line would go between these the two, two. The buildings. I think that's yeah. like yeah, what is it? Six it feet. Like four feet. Yeah. Four feet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's two. what we're that's what's being proposed. Yeah. Correct. And and the non conformance is less than what was prior to. Right. Right. So, so we're just not pointing that out. The right. Right. You're lessening the yeah. non-conformity. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I mean, that was my only question. Yeah. yeah. Was was yeah. you know how close those are, and then I guess with with before I drove by there and saw that it was for sale. There, you know, there's been the whole antiques. My business my father and, and it's still there. there. The the Bayron car sales is still there. Mm -hmm. Which technically isn't an approved use in R2 zoning. They correct. Yeah, but he went through this years yeah, ago. It's as been long there as forever. the cars yeah. were kept in the garages, uh, he was allowed to the keep town, The city yeah. has that under record. Grand grandfather did. Grandfather did. Yeah. 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 Those are my only yeah. questions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you did it. <laughs> okay. Yep. Good. Um, I will start with Mr. Landfear. Uh, well, it sounds like there's no uh, variances needed, I would say, uh, for this lot line change or, or, or combining the lots. Um, it's, to me, looking at it uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, um, I don't see any issues with it whatsoever. Ms. Andrews? Um, no questions. It just would be a good idea to, for you, it would make sense to yeah. not split it so you can use yeah. it. Yeah. <coughs> No questions or comments? Ms. Nope. Right. I think it lessens you know, the problems that have been the lines going through the buildings. Um, there's no complaints or anything. I have no issues. No, no issues. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this application? Yes. Can, can you approach them and give us your name? My name is Teresa DeCrosi, yep. and I live on Douglas. Okay. So, my question is: Is now does that mean that those two garages that are going to be separate parcels or areas, mm -hmm. do they have 25 feet in between those two garages? No, they don't. The, the garages aren't moving. So then they can turn around and sell the home and sell the garage as separate lots Correct. and now those are not going to have that zoning that they're supposed to have. The zoning won't change by the, by the lot line. But adjustment. right now they're considered all in one yeah, they're three separate and now lots. you're going to look at No, they're three, there's three separate but lots. But you can't sell the three separate lots the way they are because they built the garages so that they overlap. Right, which is what this is clearing up. So, yeah, it's clearing it up for that. But now, anybody else that buys that is going to be bumped up to somebody else's garage and their garage. Right now, it's all the same person's garage. Correct. Correct. So now, they're going to sell the, that as a, one parcel. 
you're going to sell this one as one parcel. Those two people only have a walking space, if that, in between their two properties. In, in between the two garages. Yeah. Correct. So if there's a fire in this garage, then there's going to be a fire in that garage. Correct. That's a that's a building boom thing, though. And so it shouldn't be split like that, where you're going to have that kind of property bumped up to one another. Everybody else on the street has 25 to 50 feet in between their properties. Well, it was a non-conforming previous, and we're not increasing the non-conformance. But it, we're actually decreasing the non you're, you're just taking the property that was three, owned by one person, and developing it into two properties. two properties. So now we're going to have two different people. Correct. Right. So now those two different people will be only a few feet apart with their properties. Well, that would be the same as any other pre-existing non-conforming structure. But the problem is, it's right now where they're zoned or they're conjoined and they can't sell it as three separate. Which is what they're, which is what they're fixing. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Because we don't want to have one property here, one property there, and the two garages next door to each other, somebody opening up a business on that. Garage. Well, anything that would be a business that would be there would have to come here for any approval. It's, it's approved for a residentially zoned lot, and you can't put a business in a residential so zone. So what do you think is going to be coming next? Well, that one, that's, I can't speculate on that. Somebody's just going to buy a garage? Potentially, they can build it and put a house there. Put a house on it. Where? They'd have to take it down. On, on that, the they would. They would create a. a but then, are they going to still have that only twenty-five feet between the other garage and that? If somebody puts a new wants to build new on that property, they would. They would need to conform, because these are pre-existing non-conforming conditions. So if somebody does buy that lot and they take down the garage and they want to buy and put a new house there, they have to put it on the site with the proper setbacks because it's new. So what we're dealing with right now is existing, that, that was there before, that was pre-existing. Okay. But lot A, they could build a house and keep the garage exactly They could the leave heads. it where it was, right. correct, yep. But they can't push a house right, right up to the edges right. as, as you're sold suggesting. And lot A and B, the fact that there's only four feet in between the two buildings may have an impact on the sale price. Correct. But that's and not it, for it would us. definitely have it that's would definitely not, have the impact if somebody wanted to make a change to the existing buildings, then that would kick that in. What you're talking about, the separation distance between them. But if nothing's being altered, it's pre-existing and not conforming. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this application? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, With respect to seeker, I would classify this as a type two action as it's granting of a lot line variance or lot adjustment. Therefore, no further action is required. Would someone like to form a motion based on the information that we have? Anybody? What is this? Lot line adjustment. Yeah, it's a lot line adjustment. It's kind of have to modify special permit approval. All right, give it a shot. I'd like to make a motion that the Glen Falls Planning Board, acting as the board of uh, lot line, or would like to. Uh, I'm sorry, I'd like to make a motion that the Glen Falls Planning Board approve the subdivision of Anthony and Sandra Poulos, trustees of tax map number 302.12-7-12.
13 and 14, commonly known as 217, 219, and 221 Bay Street, as, as heard on March 5th, 2023. Going from three parcels, going from three parcels to two parcels. 2024. March 5th, 2024. <laughs> I'll second that. That was a struggle. Um, all in favor? Yes. Any opposed? No. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just interior work, no exterior work, except for just the sign change. We're going to put the legacy sign up. Um, the project should take between 30 to 90 days to complete as far as building it. Um, I do own another dispensary inside of uh, Colony for legacy dispensary as well. Um, I've been licensed in New York State for about nine months, ten months approximately. Start off with delivery built it up, and then we built our dispensary in Colony. Um, so I do have an experience actually in New York with dispensaries and building it and having to operate it and run it successfully and functionally. Um, we keep our lines down. We don't create a lot of traffic outside through a system that I've developed. And um, that, I'm, I'm, I wonder, I would like to build out. I'd like to actually put one here in Glen Falls. But I do need the OSIM approval as well as Glen Falls approval um, the dispensary would be with me and a young lady named Renee Redding, who was on the application. I'm the leaseor, I'm the guarantor on the, um, on the space. Um, I am also the investor, the financer of everything that will be done with the space. Okay. And again, you have to, any, any potential approval here, once done, has to go to OCM for their final say. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so um, once... You give me the quote. What happens? The OCM is gonna, like the young lady said, they have us in a queue, mm -hmm. and they're reaching out to everybody. They've reached out to me already several times about this location and this space. Mm -hmm. Our application has been reviewed. It's at the final stages now, mm -hmm. so we are just waiting for them to make an announcement of who they're gonna approve for the license. Okay. okay. Um, I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, we do have some correspondence that was delivered to the mayor's office. I think everybody has a copy of it. Uh, not everybody. <coughs> you three have one copy. You three have one copy. <laughs> there were five copies of the Um Should I read this into? I think you should, yeah. okay. Um, and so this is a letter from uh, Jay Matheson, I think it's Matheson, um, to the planning board of the city of Glens Falls in support of rejecting the proposed cannabis shop to replace the current pizza hut on Hudson Avenue. The nature of the business is 
congruous with the surrounding mixed use properties. It would abut 14 Hudson, which includes four stories of non-smoking residential apartments with first floor hosting Adirondack community colleges, respected culinary arts facilities, which includes restaurant and kitchen, as well as employee offices and classrooms. Additionally, several doctor's offices occupy the space in the building. The entire property is non-smoking, as is the mill directly across the street. The garage, the parking garage behind, and of course, the Glens Hollis Hospital on the next block. There is also another doctor's office diagonally across next to the mill, as well as Country Meadows Academy Educational Daycare. The proposed property is surrounded on all remaining sides by restaurants and other non-smoking properties. In other words, being surrounded by schools, residences, doctor's offices, and hospitals, placing a smoke shop dead center would be like locating an adult bookstore between an elementary school and a church. At least their customers usually have the consideration to bring their purchases home before use. The last point hints at further problems. Not only would this use be not just inconsistent with, but in fact whole, run wholly opposed to the nature and the character and business features, the value add of the surrounding properties, devaluating their businesses by its very existence. But the customers would no doubt spill over into and onto the neighboring properties, using it in ways to counter their intent. 14 Hudson has benches on its property as a non-smoking property. It's hard to conceive the smoke shop customers not just using them, but overrun them to sit and enjoy their purchases. I've included several attached photos to evidence this point. Uh, two photos show customers of the recently opened shop on Union Street, Schenectady, a smaller suburban shopping area. Note that the cannabis shop sits next to a dance studio and a karate studio, largely used by families with children. Also note, despite the cold weather, the long line which stretches into and around the corner. Uh, this is true even a year after opening. It is great for the one shop, but much to the detriment of the entirely residential neighbors on the side street. And no doubt the parents bringing their kids to dance class. Uh, another page shows a photo collage of the bench area at the car park behind 14 Hudson. My guess is Glens Falls Hospital strictly enforces the no smoking on all of its properties. Consistently, one can see hospital employees sitting or standing by the bench to smoke at all times of the day. This, despite it being a non-smoking property, they stand right underneath the large no smoking sign. Why would marijuana smokers be any different? Uh, don't you agree that the other photo showing the clean, beautiful frontage of 14 Hudson dress up for the holidays represents a much better and already existing use of the space? One final point, surveys suggest a minority of Americans use marijuana, 16%, 50% more than cigarette smokers. A non-smoking neighborhood may have selected by people who don't smoke. People concerned about good health and people with a variety of medical conditions, asthma, heart failure, cancer, COPD, emphysema, and so on. How many have chosen to make these non-smoking apartments their home? The benefits go well beyond simple performance or preference and business models. I respectfully request the planning board reject the proposed use as inconsistent in, op in opposition to and detrimental to the existing use, residents, and businesses of the area. Jay Matheson, 14 Hudson Apartment, 314 Glens Hall Street. And there are several pictures that are attached. Enterprises. Um, this will be our third lease entering with Matthew Robinson. Um, we have uh, been working with Ma Matthew for almost over a year now since he's actually been fully in business. We've been negotiating leases for far longer than that. Um, he recently opened his first uh, retail location in uh, Central Square, 1839 Central Ave. 
Um, since going in there, prior to going in there, there was a former Pizza Mare restaurant that was vacant for three years. Uh, he went into that store, he opened up a uh, brand new state-of-the-art facility, full LED lighting, high efficiency uh, HVAC equipment, uh, and uh, a very secure location. Um, he has uh, extra security personnel on site, uh, and he runs a very clean business. We've not had any issues um, with criminal activity uh, or delinquencies, um, any sort of issues on the property. The property's also on the bus line. Uh, we've not had any issues with people, uh, patrons of the bus, or anybody coming from the property to the bus line or getting off the bus line. Um, in the leases, they are written as non-smoking on the property. Uh, there's obviously no smoking in the buildings. I know of it, maybe one or two buildings in the state of New York where you can smoke inside. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I, <laughs> uh, just hearing that, the, you know, the non-smoking buildings, I completely agree. Nobody wants, nobody's asking for smoking inside their building. Um, well, you know, the dispensary law says they can't consume on-site, right? Right, so the dispensary law does not allow on-site right. consumption, so right. we, they can't consume they can't in the building or in the space. In the building, so right. at, yeah, right. at a space like 12 Hudson, there would be no consumption. Okay. It would just be a purchase, and just from my experience of the dispensary I own in right now, most customers, pretty much 99.999%, because I can't see what people do like once they drive off, mm -hmm. but when they leave our facility, they're not smoking using any cannabis products. We do stand very firm on do not get high and drive, so we, we, uh, we actually have a sign up inside of our store that actually says that. So yeah, we do not uh, permit the smoking in the building or near the building. That's those premises that we can control. True. Premises outside of our control is, there's nothing that we can do. When someone walks down the block, well, I can't tell them, hey, stop what you're doing. Right. But I can control yeah. what I do on or on your site. On your yes. Right. Right. Good. Thank you. Is that the same policy, um, you know, figure out as far as uh, other types of cannabis consumption? Yes, no cannabis consumption, so you can't take the edibles, you can't it's take... It's not just the smoking. It's not the just the smoking, there is no cannabis consumption. Okay. So even a beverage, you can't drink a beverage. A vape pen that's really like quiet, mm -hmm. you can't do the vape pen. There is no cannabis consumption at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll turn over to our architectural consultant. Um, just, just to start up, just very basically, you're in zoning GC2, which is, so this is an approved commercial, um, you know, approved retail for this business. Retail, business. retail business, excuse me, yeah, retail business in this zone. So, you know, there's, there's no issue there. Um, you've got some on-site parking there. I know that I'm familiar with the, the dispensary that the person was citing in Schenectady because it was in the news and we had this discussion with the other proposed dispensary regarding traffic, but I, I you know, I don't see any long-term issue myself personally because you've got some parking there and I know that nowadays people can order ahead and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Um, the coolers out back, you represent the landlords, so this, yes. those, those are Pizza Hut coolers. Correct. Just in the name of then, if we're going to turn it over and it becomes a new business in the name of kind of making it look better back there, it would be nice if the Coolers will be removed. Yeah, Matt has, you have no reason nice. for any, no, right, right. any, any uh, commercial refrigeration on site. Great. Um, and then you don't need a commercial dumpster of any kind, right? No. Okay, but if you had some sort of exterior stuff, we would just ask that they would be enclosed, as, okay. as with any other business. Um, my understanding is you're not throwing anything, any kind of product away outside anyway. No. It's all very <laughs> secure. <laughs> right. Um, and then as far as any new signage, that's a separate application. Right. Um, you had said that the sign that you have is no larger than the Pizza Hut sign. It would just say Legacy Dispensary on it and plain, it would just be like, we have like a special writing. Yep. If you look at Legacy Dispensary, you'll see it. And it'd just be Legacy Dispensary, no logo. Yep. We just put it with the Pizza Hut sign. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. no, yes. no, By OCM, right. yeah, there's no logos allowed. There's no neon. You can't have, you can't have right. flashing lights outside. You can't have colors in that whole nine yards. Okay. So there'd be, and there would be two signs just so. 
you know, there'll be one on the building and then there's like a standalone sign. There's the pylon sign that's out there that's an existing and, and according to our sign code, you're allowed to have a pylon sign. Okay. Right. So that's its own, just oh. its own paperwork to fill out with presenting that. And then um, any new lighting proposed outside? So uh, the Pizza Hut, they've been a tenant there for uh, as long as I've as right, long they as have I've the represented the property. That shine they down. have the gooseneck lights. Uh, we will be reviewing, uh, and at the bare minimum, we'll be installing LED lighting to replace any old filament bulbs that are still on that property. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we turn over that space, we want it to feel fresh. We want it to feel new. We want it to feel inclusive of the community and the neighborhood that it represents. Okay, I, I would say just be aware that we like to see dark sky light fixtures if you're going to put in any new light okay. fixtures there. Um, and then obviously you're, as you said, waiting for state approval, so whatever we say is contingent upon that for the site. And then I guess we have to have the discussion about distance. We don't At have some really point, don't. it's... We do not. Okay. The state requires five, uh, can not be on the same road or within 500 feet of a school, a defined school. And it cannot be on the same street or avenue within 200 feet of a building for house of worship. And I don't think there's any issue with either of those. No, it was the distance between, potential distance between. So when, when it comes like dispensaries, the distance is only based on getting proximity protection. Um, I've gotten proximity protection from my other dispensary. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the state will send you an email mm -hmm. and it will say, you've been granted proximity protection, which means you've been approved for this space. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, there's nobody else going to go within 2,000 feet yeah. unless right, right. the that state makes a right. one in a million decision and says, no, we're going to allow two or three here. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them do that yet. Is there, a, is there a thing in there about community buildings? Yeah. Is the hospital considered? No, it's not. So on our other one, I mean, it's not out of the ground yet, but would the yeah. new farmer's market building be considered a community building? Because that's like across the street, and was it 800 feet? It's 500 feet. Yeah, it's 500 feet. 500 feet to a community building, community facility. I think it'd be clear for this building it's the other building that would be an issue. The other building would I know, be closer. There's, there's yeah. a community building thing that's in here for you know that comes up. You know, what what you know It doesn't define what's funny is it doesn't, it doesn't define, really define, define right? right. So it's a hospital. I mean it's used by everyone in the community that can be. So is that a community building? Well, that's a medical facility, that's a hospital, that's defined okay. under the law. All right. that's 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 that was my that was my question as well. I kinda went through the the OCM. I mean it does give Right, they have a they have a board. But again that, that comes down to OCM's determination. Right. Their decision. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Whether or not we whether or not we decide it is that that's completely OCM's fault. Right. So whether that's considered a, a, yeah. a community yeah. building. I I just, the rights. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, um, I will start with Mr. Landy. Any uh, a couple of things. I, I guess I'm the same thing that community building, the new building is being built, how that's defined, but I know that sounds like that's not our decision. That's in part the interpretation of the OCM. Yeah. You, you also mentioned too a couple of times that they've been, they've contacted you, they've emailed you um, in regards over of this location. Yeah. Um, again, I don't know if it's planning board. Uh, concern, but Tom, I mean, let me let me, inter let me interject because we did find uh, there is a definition. Their, office their definition. Of, right, Office of Cannabis Management does define community facility, a facility that may include but not limited to a facility that provides daycare to children, a public park, a playground, a public swimming pool, a library, or a center or facility where the primary purpose of which is to provide recreational opportunity or services to children or adolescents. So, it's closed, isn't it? No, it's reopened. It's reopened. Yeah. New one is going hardcore. Where is it? Which one? The South. South. Yes. 
No, the guy that has the dirt track up in Fort Allen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that is something to keep in mind. Well, there is yeah. Yeah. Where, is the, where is it? Where is it? On, it's on South Street, South of School. It's it's kind of yeah, yeah. Across the street from well, the it's right. actually closer so town, to the other town, post yeah. dispensary. No, new, yeah. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Country Meadows Daycare. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Do you want to say this in this letter? It's unfortunate. No, it's on no, it's 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 Common Meals. Yeah. That's the one by the The Mill is oh, all Country Meadows Academy Education. Um, I don't know. So. You're saying there's a daycare on like South Street? Yes. I think it might be. So I think that rule applies to like the sprint is on the same street. Same street. Right. And we're not on South you're Street. We're not on South Street. Street. But right. the other applicant may have an issue. This, it's, it's, yeah. right, it's right here. Right. right. But it has to be on the same street. Right. right. It says it cannot be on the same road and within 500 feet. And that's for community facility and house of worship is same street and within 200 feet. But you're not on South Street. No, we're on Hudson. Right. On Hudson. And you're 500 feet. Again, I think that's a call that the OCM is going to have to, you know, going to have to make just something for you to be aware of. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't foresee it being that far. I mean, again, I, is it 500 feet away? It's got to be close. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, no, continue. No problem. Too. The the pictures that show your dispensary down in Colony, is the lines that are shown there typical? No. That's, that's not it. That's 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 you said in Colony? Yes. Those that were disconnected. Oh, no, it's connected. Yeah, that's, that's Somebody. Right. No, so we're a large, so what happens with disconnected dispensaries, they're small. So when they get their customers, they can't take them in fast, but because they're small. We're a large dispensary in Colony. We're 3,100 square feet. Mm -hmm. So our, we have we don't have lines. Our customers come right in. We can hold up to 50 people inside the store and another oh. seven people outside. Like we have a vestibule, okay. so we have no lines. And I would plan to do the same thing in uh, Glens Falls to eliminate the lines to make so people can come in and not stand outside, so it doesn't mess up the appearance of the neighborhood and community. So you don't anticipate any lines at all? Maybe the first day. Maybe the first week. Honestly, just until we get the systems running perfectly. But once we get everything running smoothly and perfectly, I don't anticipate long lines. And I guess just a general question too, because I never thought about it. If you got a dispensary, I got a restaurant, somebody's smoking in my restaurant, and they won't stop. Who do you, what do you do? You call the cops? Yeah. 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 So it's a, <laughs> that's what I would do. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Um, I think other than that, I've got you no know, further questions at this point. Mr. Bell, we went over a bunch of stuff that I have out there. So. Um, just about the business, like what are you going to be open seven days a week, and what are your hours going to be? You um, so the best hours that I've seen are the hours between nine to nine. We may stay open if it's a Friday or a Saturday, we may stay open until 10, but 10 would be like the max. Like I, right now we open to 10 in Colony, and I'm debating on cutting it back till nine. Most people that consume or that purchase our products to take home to consume, they get the products around six, five, four, maybe seven. And then after that, it's very slow. And then, you know, one and two here and there, but it slows down after around seven. So for us, I think nine would be the best option. And seven days a week, you think? Yes, seven days a week, 10 to six on Sundays. Okay. Um, and then you said you did delivery at your other one, would you be do doing that out of the store as well? Yes, well, not initially, but we would want to build up to get there to delivery. Um, being that we we'll open up the dispensary first, I would want to solidify the business to make sure it's stable. Mm -hmm. Once we uh, can confirm that it's stable and we can handle delivery, then we would pick up the delivery service. Um, you only need one to two cars to do a delivery service. It's not too complex, but I've been doing it for almost a year, so I have a little bit of insight. And the cars are marked. Cars are not marked. There's not going to be like a bunch of stickers on it. It's right. very discreet. You wouldn't even know one right. of our cars. It probably drives by you every day. <laughs> Door dash. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they got signs. <laughs> um, okay, so those are my those are my questions. Thank you. Um, so, do you? I know other places do this. 
have scheduled um, purchases, would you do that as well? Like have, like you can do, I know just other places you can go online and schedule. Yes, day. so we do that now. That's right. exactly what we do. We do schedule pickups. Mm -hmm. Um, there's two types of scheduled pickup, one that's paid for, one that's unpaid for. The paid for pickups take about 15 to 30 seconds to complete. The unpaid ones may take about a minute. Right. So it moves very quickly. Right, so that would eliminate the long lines. Yes. That's essentially, yeah, so I just wanted to clarify that. So if you had scheduled purchases, then that will alleviate the ones. Okay. That was it. Yeah, our discussion about 10 Cs, it sounded as if just a few people would be inside the store at a time, which would, not your store, but the other one would force the people to be outside. Um, she said she could always thought she'd have four or five people in the store at a time, which your, sounds like you're operating with a larger volume of, of customers. So that, that's good, that a break down the line issue, because that was an issue for the other location. Okay, thank you. This is all new to us. You guys have been doing it here. <laughs> Thanks. That's all. All right. Um, as far as uh, the Lunch Planning Board, are they really um, are answered pretty much everything that needs to be that everything's in play. As far as uh, it's a plug in play, as far as I'm concerned. As long as the, the, the uh, uh, signage is done and you guys are going to make something for uh, you guys to do, um, I don't see any situations um, as far as planning. You know, beyond that, you know, you will have a verbal for sure. Uh, but uh, I'm good with it. I am as well. Um, I think the next step for us, Seeker? Uh, Seeker, with respect to Seeker, I would classify this as a type two action, as it's replacement, rehab, or reconstruction of a structure or facility in kind on the same site. Therefore, no further action is required. Okay. And then, if we have nothing further, I would make a motion that Glens Falls Planning Board, acting as the Board of Architectural and Site Plan Review, hereby grants architectural and site plan approval. Well, it is, but then it says sketch plan or site plan on the application. I think it's just architectural. It's just architectural? Because he doesn't need site plan. Correct. Gotcha. It's just architectural so architecture review. So I will amend that to be just architectural yes. review. Hereby grants architectural approval for the project identified as uh, MDB Enterprises Incorporated, the applicant representing the owner, Matthew Robinson, Legacy Dispensary Incorporated, for the property located at 12 Hudson Avenue, as presented at the meeting of 5 March 2024. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the next item on the planning board, I will recuse myself as I am representing the applicant. I will turn it over to Ms. Hart. All right. Uh, next up is the sketch plan of uh, Margaret Gerard for 109, 115, 117 Warren Street. Ethan Hall, principal with Rosinski Hall Architecture. With me tonight is Joe Lucci, who represents Foothills Builders. Um, Foothills is in the process of purchasing the property from Margaret Gerard. Uh, it is the property that is um, 109 to 117 Warren Street. It's the former Daly Town and Country Chrysler. 
Um, it's a brownfield opportunity. Um, the automobile dealership has been taken down. There are still two buildings that exist on the site that would obviously come down as part of this project. Um, I'll get back to the rendering when we get done. This is the existing site. There's one building that's at the back of the site back here, um, way back from uh, Warren Street. There's another building here that is currently being used by Gerard as kind of storage and they operate out of there uh, for some of the landscape stuff that they've got. Pretty much the entire lot on the upper portion of it is hard surface already. It was a paved lot. Um, some of the pavement is pretty well deteriorated. Um, there's not a whole lot of drainage on that lot. The lower half of it, it does connect down through to, um, to Oakland Avenue. This is a very steep portion of it, very heavily wooded in the back, and it kind of runs through. Um, not a lot of opportunity, there's not a lot of opportunity to develop that. So our development pretty much stays on the flat portion up on the top of the built on the top of the lot. <clears throat> The building that we have proposed is an L-shaped building. Um, we have it proposed to be built, potentially depending on funding, in two phases. Phase one would be the building that fronts on Warren Street. It's a four-story building. First floor is commercial. Upper three floors would be apartments. Um, first floor is a steel frame building. Um, from there up, it's a wood frame building above the second floor. Um, the entry for the tenants, for the occupants upstairs and the stairwells are on the back portion of this where we connect to the phase two building. Um, we do realize that there are area variances that are required. We are scheduled to be in front of the um, zoning board on the 18th of March. Just our, our meeting fell before theirs. We put the applications at the same time. Um, we do need some height variances. The height variance that we need is for the elevator run by. The elevator does go all the way to the roof uh, for access there. Um, and our parapets that are on the front of the facade to break the facade up are a little bit higher than what the 50 foot zone allows. The actual roof height is 50 feet above there. So um, the second portion of the building in the back, again, would be commercial on the first floor. Um, the way that we're looking at it right now is that would be climate controlled storage. It would be offered to the tenants because the, a lot of the apartments nowadays don't have a whole lot of space for storage. So this would be a, a, a space that the owners could use to provide storage for the people that live there for larger items, or it could be opened up to you know, the general public for, for storage. Um, we do not have yet a tenant for the first floor, where Joe's still working on. <laughs> We're a little early on that, but we are looking at it. Um, we've looked at several different opportunities. Uh, just trying to find the right one that's going to fit. Um, the access to the site would be between what is now Simon's Heating and Cooling, which was formerly Glens Falls Canine. Um, we would be providing a new entryway here. It's a 24 foot entry drive. I've been in touch with John Ellingsworth, who's the former uh, fire chief. He's reviewed the, the drawings. Um, we've talked to Jeremy Schneibel, the city engineer. Uh, we've gotten that discussion rolling. Our engineers are working with them as far as uh, stormwater management goes, as far as um, water and sewer are concerned, we do have to provide, this will be a fully sprinkler building with a standpipe system in it. <clears throat> we do have to provide a fire hydrant because we're, we don't have one, the way that the system lays out, we don't have one close enough. So when we bring the new water main in, we'll wind up putting a hydrant right out front. Um, we have parking on site. All, of, all the parking that's required for the building is contained on site. We have 60 apartments plus commercial space. Um, our requirement is 107 parking spaces. We're providing 112. Um, some of the ones that are up on the entryway up here would be short term only parking spaces. So that would be for the people who would be using the commercial space. There is also parking on Warren Street, both sides. Um, the rest of them are for tenants. We're also looking at providing seven, what we're calling smart car, zip car, uh, that would be rental. Um, zip car is a citywide, it's, it's used a lot in the bigger cities. It's cars that are for rental, like right. the bikes that you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be something that we would provide for people who don't have a car. 
these would be some, some parking spaces that we're looking at adding for that for that opportunity. 112. 112. Are the zip cars included in that or, or over and above that? That's that's over and above. I mean that would have to be zip car is something that you have it's a franchise. Yeah. So it would be something that would have to be dedicated and they'd have to come and do that. So mm -hmm. but that's that's kind of what we're looking at as far as putting that together. How many spaces do you think you need? 107. Would it, is it going to depend on what goes in commercial? That's it. Okay. <laughs> it, it. It really depends on that. I mean, if you, that's the other, re, our other reason for having the storage back here is that that requires very little parking. Very, very. Yeah. So that would leave us with 11,500 square feet of general commercial yeah. space. And again, we've, we've spoken with the city. Um, the city does own the lot at the bottom of the hill down here. Uh, there are 50 some odd spaces down there. We've talked with the city about being able to use some of those spaces for general overflow. Um, again, we're we're providing enough right. parking for everything is that's there on this. Parking in that there is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're allowed. Yep. Yeah, there's uh, on street parking all the way down to Oakland. So, um, we're developing a landscape plan. We're developing stormwater management and lighting plans. The idea would be that. Uh, there will be pole lights in the in the actual parking lot itself. Uh, some pole lights along here and some pole lights along the east side. It would all be downcast fixtures, uh, similar to what you'd see in any other parking lot. Um, we're looking at providing planters along the front of the building, um, some green spaces. Our overall lot coverage is less than what's allowed by zoning code, but our overall lot coverage is greater than what's there now. So we're actually increasing our, our permeability on the site over what's there now, um, and we will be providing full stormwater management, which currently does not exist. Um, the building itself, as I said, is, is four stories. Uh, the first floor is general commercial, uh, as required by our code, and the upper floors would be apartments. The units that are on the Warren Street front-facing side are a little larger units. Um, most of those are two bedrooms. There's still a couple up here that are one bedroom. They're a little bit larger units. I've given you the breakdown of each individual unit so you can see the square footage and number of bedrooms. Um, the ones in the back, this section, which would be phase two of the project, um, are basically market rate apartments. They would be workforce housing, one bedroom. Um, Joe and, and the company that he owns and, and runs right now is building the apartments at uh, Exit 18 on Main Street, mm -hmm. the new building that's there now. Um, they've had really good success with the size of their units that are there. So we've actually taken that and, and used it here, made it actually a little bit bigger than the one that's at Exit 18. So, um, <clears throat> the upper floors, Above that, obviously, are all apartment units, which shows on this two. Um, the last drawing that I've got here shows the roof plan. Um, a lot of our mechanicals, this would be a flat roof building. Um, the <coughs> parapets all face in so that the rain doesn't come off the parapet and fall four stories to the ground. Everything drains into the building. So we've taken all that into account. So we don't want snow and ice to build up falling out onto the sidewalk from four stories up. <coughs> Um, our exterior elevation, I'll show you the renders first. This is the idea of the building, seeing it from Warren Street. Um, we've got brick all posed on the first floor with some split face block on the bottom portion of it. Um, at the main entry to the building, we've <coughs> done the brick all the way up. Um, we've shown different combinations to kind of break up the facade. It, it is sort of a long building that's fairly tall. Um, we've tried to incrementally break the building up and set it forward or backward to give it shadow lines. Um, to break that up, we've also used some ornamental um, decorative facade pieces that will break that up. The upper floor of it would be kind of an EIFS or stucco feel, um, some horizontal and vertical clapboard or um, flat plane. We're kind of researching that right now. Uh, but this would be the color scheme, it kind of gives you the idea there. This elevation that's shown here is shown from the east. If you were traveling into the city, this shows just phase one. 
phase two actually connects here and would extend out, and that's shown on the non rendered elevations. <coughs> Back in the building is the view from the parking lot. And this is the actual second phase of the view. Um, what else can I tell you? Questions for you guys? Um, are, are you going to have mechanical equipment up there that might be high? It won't, it won't be above the parapets. There will be mechanical equipment up there, but nothing that we're aware of right now. Mm -hmm. The unit that Joe's doing over on Main Street right now has all the equipment up there on the roof already. You mm -hmm. can't see it from anywhere. Okay. You're doing the same kind of system then? Yes. Okay. <coughs> well, the, that side elevation, um, this one. where do you see that from? You see that driving down Warren from... If you're coming from the east, coming into the city. Yeah, okay. You, so, Glens Falls Canine, or, I'm talking, Simmons, right, right, Simmons right. HVAC, yeah. comes, comes to about here on the building. Yeah. If you, if you look at site plan, there if you look at site plan, their, their building yep, stops Yeah, that's right that here. elevation. So okay. far off away, you'll still see that. You will see, yeah, it's far enough out that you'll see back into, you know, back into the, the space there. So we've tried to keep the theme of the building that's in the front, and we've wrapped it around this side. Everything changes when you get to the back, or obviously our, our siding is a little different in the back of the building. Is there anything because it's brown space that does it indicate any special use or procedures or anything? No, we've done we've done the geotechnical. There's been a phase one environmental done on the project before it was before it was allowed to be demolished. I think phase two is underway now. The phase two, Jeff. Sorry. Phase two environmental. Uh, we're not right now. Uh, <laughs> we have a submission for the uh, PBA. Yeah. Let me get that back on the So I know that I know that's being worked on, and our engineers are working on that as well. If you. And then related to that sorry. question is increasing green space, and um, I can't tell by the drawing where that would be because there's so much parking lot. Right. <clears throat> so, if you take a look at what's here now, our existing coverages, the, the existing buildings on the site are 10,700 square feet roughly. That's this building and this building. Um, the paving and walkway on the site is 58,196 square feet. That's well over an acre of pavement. Basically from Warren Street all the way back to the back of the building back here is hard surface. When it was the car dealership, it was asphalt parking. Like I said, some of that has deteriorated over the years, but it's still there. It's, it's still gravel, hard surface parking. Um, and that's how it's been used. Even when they tore the old building down that was here, there's the, the, the old cellar hole that was there, but it's all been filled in and Gerard's have been using year after year after year for their, for their purposes. So there's really no stormwater management. We've done the geotechnical work, we've done all the borings, it's sand as deep as they could dig. <laughs> I mean, they, they, did, um, they did two borings within the footprint of the building that were 50 feet deep. So they've been, and, and they did not hit refusal with those, with those borings. Um, they, they hit a pocket of organics, a small pocket of organics back in here somewhere, which we'll have to take care of structurally when we do the building, but otherwise they didn't find anything that was... No gas tanks, no? Nope. Well, that, that being said, because it obviously has got a great absorption rate Absolutely. Uh, at this point, would it be any consideration for uh, maybe a certain amount of forest uh, asphalt? So we're looking at it, we've got our, like I said, we've got our site engineer looking at which way they're going. This is kind of ideal. My, my issue with porous asphalt is that it over, it's a maintenance thing. It has to be vacuumed, it has to be taken care of. And over time, it just, it, it slows down working. And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, with the winters that we have here and plowing and everything else, it gets chewed up. Um, Beach Road is a perfect example up there. The, everything that the state yeah, touted. But you wouldn't have that heavy equipment on there like you put Beach Road. They, they're going to have to remove. 
snow removal is snow removal is going to have to be well, that's taken, taken yeah, yeah. yeah so the idea here is that everything is everything in the lot gets plowed to the back and we have snow storage area on the flat portion at the top and then if it obviously if we ever get snow again yeah um, it will build up and have to be removed from the site once it's but the sun is Incredible. So yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Right. The sun exposure. Yeah. This is due south. Yeah. You know. This, this and is. And you got the east. It's all open to the east. Right. So. And and you know and when the sun is at its lowest angle in the winter, it's still beating right down in that spot. Um, everything else would be controlled internally. We we drain it all and get it into infiltrators and get it into the ground that way. We did a similar system on Main Street that I imagine Matt's going to design on this and. I think it was two months ago where we got that three inches of rain in about 12 hours. Yeah. I don't think there's a puddle on the site, so mm -hmm. handles it pretty well. Okay. Thank you. Nina, did you have anything else that you wanted oh, to Oh, I was going to ask, so if you're facing this, what's going to happen on the site? With, with this with portion? Phase two, yeah. I think it would just be green space. You, you leave it. <clears throat> and and really, ultimately, it all Because it's not green space now, so you would, I mean, I don't know if you're thinking one year or potentially all, two years, ordered. right? Like, you know, from a funding point of view, it could yeah, be for a while, so. Come down to funding. Once we get through the approval process, we're gonna start really digging into that and seeing how it's gonna work out for us the best way. We, we figure this is somewhere around a $15 million project. Right. So if it is, a, so, it. so, you know, you have to, you know, obviously your funding has to work out. So right. if, if phase two doesn't come for a couple of years, then I, you, you said green space. So yeah, this becomes, this becomes nice. lawn, it would, be, it would be planted, it wouldn't mm -hmm. be left as, as, you know, just raw dirt. It right, would be, right. we, we would take care of that and then, you know, plant it, either put lawn down or, you know, have it be some kind of outdoor space. <clears throat> there is a neat little bump out on the east side that's right behind the church um, that would be green space that would be used for the tenants, place for an outdoor Good. space. Not at all. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's true. Um, I mean, I think that this project will greatly improve a section of Warren Street that has been an eyesore for a very long time. Um, you know, and, and it extends the development that's been going on downtown. We need housing. We always need housing. Um, what sort of Commercial tenants, are you talking to? <coughs> I don't know how far out of the bag we can let that. Right That's now. fine. <laughs> That's fine. Restaurant? Yes. No. Can't know. We we don't we don't know for sure. We've okay. we've had we've, we've talked to a few different people okay. and we're still trying to. But it's one commercial space. It's big. I was just curious. It's Eleven thousand five hundred square feet. Big. Yeah. Big. yeah. So I mean, if so it may be, is, yeah, it can. Yeah, I was assuming that it would be several different. It, it can or be, a few yeah. or it could be, or it could be one. Okay. You know, Indoor pickleball. Not even. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, yeah. Um. I. I was looking, yeah, on the black and white prints, the window boxes, those belong to the tenants. Correct. And we, I talked with Joe about that. There, there would be a maintenance agreement that, that's signed with all the tenants that say that they have to keep the, you know, they would have to keep the flower boxes, you know, you can't just let your flower boxes die off. You have to it's, it's, yeah, right, it's a, it's a thing. And, and it is, and it's, just a with, thought. And with Joe being the owner of the property, it's something that he can easily enforce. It's not um, like he's building this to flip it to somebody else. Right. They're they're building it in the rent. Are those are the first story? Those look like overhead doors. So what we yeah basically what we've got this is this is a fixed glass, and because we don't know where True. the openings are going to be, yeah, we've similar to what we did on Main Street. We've designed these to be th this nine window block. The middle one can be a door. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now it's set up to be windows with aluminum panel on the bottom and windows on the top. This is the main entry to that portion of the building. Again, we've got a nine unit here. This is an overhead, a full glass overhead door similar to what's on the front of Mikado. Yeah. So that if, if somebody was in either of these spaces, those could be closed most of the time if they decided that they wanted to open it up. I mean, mm -hmm. if it is a restaurant, it's a nice thing to be able to get out. We've got a fair amount of property on Warren Street before you actually get right. to the city sidewalk. Yeah, you're set back. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, the setback that's required is 20 feet, we're 18 and change. 
um, before you actually get the property line is here, and then you've got all the sidewalk in front of it. So for if if this was a restaurant space or whatever, um, if there were outside dining that were wanted to to be put there, that can all be put out before we even get to the sidewalk. So encroachment permits wouldn't be a, a thing that would be required if they if somebody decided to do a restaurant there. Right. Um, and then back to the the elevation. I mean, just from a design point of view, I think I, I think I mentioned we texted about this a little bit. My only thought was, do you? And now I can't see with the dark colors. Are the shutters still on there? Yep. We've got them in certain areas. They're here, and they would be put in to kind of match the lineals. So the windows would have lineals around them, and then the, the shutters. Oh, from be, a color point of view. Color, from a color I guess my only thought was the shutters are a nod towards residential, and this is this is a clean modern building. Yeah, with we a different tried to kind keep of that of to to just to break up the aesthetic. They're, they're not on every window. So some of these windows, you know, some of them in the in the upper bays have transoms above them, and we try to you know to do that to break that up. Um, these ones, while well, they set back a little bit, mm -hmm. the front facade sets back, we've kind of got that same feel there. Because it's set in, so yes. it's right, not a flat. I, no, I, I get that you're you're trying to give texture to the facade yeah. because it's a it's a pretty large facade. Yeah. What's the identified historic site? Do you know? I don't. That's an auto pop on. <laughs> right. I can't. I, I looked through. I the only thing that I, 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 I didn't know we had Falcons. Yeah, I didn't either right. until I tried to do the, the seeker. Um, the only thing I can think of, Karen, is the canal. Oh, okay. It, it, because we're you know we're right up the hill from the feeder canal, and the feeder canal is the list of historic. Hmm. Things. What about the armory? How far down is that? Um, it's another block. Okay. It's that's quite a ways down. That was. I don't, yeah. I don't think that is. But we're outside of the three squares historic yeah. district, so yeah. I, I, I couldn't see anything that was a, a listed. I went on and looked for all the listed sites I could find. Right. The only thing that I found was the fever canal. Anything else, Nina? I don't have any other comments. It is just sketch plan, but if we have anybody in the audience who would like to make a comment, please feel free to come up. <coughs> anybody? I just want to go to your uh, stormwater management plan. We don't have it yet. Okay. We're still working on it. What was your plan for the west side? Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry. Can you just give us your well, name? Gary Tucker. Tucker. Gary Tucker, thank you. My property abuts the west side of it. And I've always had an issue with stormwater running up. Running up. Running up. Running there, And they were just hauling snow there. Right. So the idea there is that everything is going to have infiltrators that will get it into the ground and get it into the soil so that it doesn't run off and go down over that hill. Okay. That's, that's the big issue is that whole back portion. And you were talking about greenscaping. Yes. You have a little indent there behind the church area. Is yeah. that going to be like a smoking area? No. As you can no. see, I get smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No. It's, it's, it's a non, it'll be a non smoking building all over the All the property area. And how about lights? The only, the only lights would be in, down in, in the parking lot. Yeah. It wouldn't be anything reflecting down no. onto Friel Avenue at all? No. You know, everything is facing into the parking lot, and it'll all be, be cut off fixtures so that the light only goes towards the parking lot, not the way. We'll, we're um, preparing a lighting plan that shows the zero foot candle at the property line. Will there be another meeting when you have the storm? Yes, this is, no. yeah, this is just okay. sketch plan review right now. Yep, I'm totally for it. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. we're not going to dump all our storm water on you. I've been dealing with that ice for years. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. Yep. My name is Richard Mechanic. I own 24 Fordella, which is the property you guys should consider owning. <laughs> <laughs> that will alleviate your water problems. My question is, uh, so I own the hill, I own that property. It's already wet. Okay. From so, water. yeah. The runoff that doesn't come off that property, mm -hmm. yeah, it's already wet. Yeah. So, my question is, I, I think this is awesome. Like Gary, I, it's, it would be wonderful. Um, I believe Ferdella is, 24 is a, a multi-family 
it, it's zoned multifamily. So I'm getting closer to retirement age. I was planning on maybe talking to the city about putting a couple apartments on that piece of property. With this going in, <clears throat> I don't know what effect that would have on your guys or the city's approval for me to try to do anything. Um, that, I mean, that's my concern is it's the runoff because that city property, the parking area, yep. yeah, I own all of that next to oh, it. Up on top. Yeah, all the way to it. Yeah. From your lot all the way down the hill to it. So I would be open for offers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I consider selling it and then I said, ah, you know what? I mean, I, I rent it now, so. Um, I figure 20 years worth of rentals, I'm hoping, uh, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my card because we, we may want to talk. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be awesome. But I, I, this would be great for the city, I personal opinion, I don't know. I, I'm just concerned about yeah. what I can do, you know, for my own property. Yeah. As I said, right now there's no stormwater runoff on that site. There's no, there's no, there's no stormwater. It comes water. through the wall. No, no, I mean, no stormwater management. Yeah, no. Everything that's there I'm, runs off and runs to you. Yeah. And, and to him. So no, it's wet. I'm once not. we yeah, once we get that taken care of, we'll get it in. <laughs> Our the borings that we did up on the Warren Street side didn't show groundwater until we got down about thirteen feet, which is about where it's bleeding out of it. Yeah, there's a soft spot down there. I had my tractor there and got stuck. <laughs> but that's what I, all I wanted. And yeah. to be honest with you, I was hoping to put something like that down below, you know, drive in the garage, two stories up, little apartments, you know, a <laughs> couple buildings, that's my dream, but, all right, that's what Thank I got. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Keith, you want to go back over? Did you have anything else to add? And you were bouncing around. I'm sorry, did somebody else want to go back to you? Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, I was just curious, did we get any, any type of uh, supplementary um, utility volumes or capacity to water, sewer, or anything? Like that? Yeah, that's what we're working on right now. Okay. I mean, so that we, we know we had to go through the hurdles with the yep. west side there. Yep. Uh, so I just got one of The good news is, is all the infrastructure on Warren Street was just redone. Was what? All of the infrastructure on Warren Street was just redone within the I, past I, okay. eight, eight, or, eight or ten years. I mean, they, they redid from, from the circle all the way down to Sherman Town Road. Oh, okay. That's why you can land the 747 on Warren Street because yeah, the yeah, lights are right. only 90, 70 feet apart or something. Which is Good. I was, uh, again, it was kind of a hot topic with one yeah. of our other so. Yeah. so we know that we, like I said, I, I, I've talked with J.D. Ellensworth. Um, about the, the fire protection and what we need to do there. Um, the building will be fully sprinklered all this the way through. Be, this will be fire? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. And, and uh, <laughs> the issue, one of, one of the items that, that JD brought up was uh, regarding the, the access to the site. And I sat down and talked with him. He was concerned that because we're four stories, that means the ladder truck has to be able to get to it. Um, and he was concerned that the ladder truck couldn't come in, make this turn and this turn and then set up. And what I said to him was, well, we've actually set this up so that a track trailer, a city trailer, can come in and make this turn and come back out and go this way. Um, he was trying to come in, he was, he was trying to show it to get in this way and our, our um, site engineer is working on showing all the turn rate guys to oh. show that it can get in, you can make the turn and get the thing set up. Yeah, well, we love the yeah. yeah, yeah, and and this this space that we provided here is actually a loading zone mm -hmm. that would be at the back of the building. It's not out on the street, so mm -hmm. any any deliveries that would get made can get made to the back of the building, not be out on the street. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Is that it? Yes. Kim, did you have anything else? I'm all set. Okay, good. Looking forward to the, uh, the next stage. <laughs> Can we talk about the rooftop terrace? Sure. <laughs> What's going to be up there and how big is it going to be? So the rooftop terrace that we have shown right now, yeah. <clears throat> this is a walkway okay. that's, up, that's up there. That's on and phase two. <coughs> this is on the phase two portion. This is our stair access and our elevator access yep. that comes up in the core. 
this is the part that we need the height variance for. This part, this stair, and this stair are what we need the height variances for. Everything else stays pretty much in. Um, have you been up on top of the Marriott in Lake George? No. Okay, that's what we're looking at here. This, this, this portion that we have set aside here is the rooftop deck itself. It sits above the main portion of the roof by about 18 inches. It has, the one that we did at the Marriott has a, a wood deck. It's um, almost like a parquet floor. Every two feet it changes direction mm -hmm. so that the water runs through it and can get to the stormwater drains on the roof. Um, we've surrounded it with planters so that people can't really get from this point to the outside, no to the outside edge, exactly, to keep people away from the outside edge. Um, and as I said, all of these parapets that are shown here actually drain back towards the roof. They don't go out. So when you're on that portion of it, when you're standing on the rooftop deck, you'll be able to see over the top of the parapet, but it's a distance. You won't be able to look straight down the edge of the building. Um, so what kind of green area will be up on top? Probably just uh, evergreen plantings and some tree boxes more than anything else. I mean, it's going to have to be something that, that will survive in a tree box yeah. on a roof, yeah. not put to the ground. Well, listen, if we, you know, I mean, that's extra trees that we wouldn't have had anyway. So. Greener. Yeah. yeah. I can't count it as green space, though. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I wish you could make it a green roof. I mean, just so much, like, I, I'm just seeing more and more architecture where <clears throat> trees and plants are included as, yep. you know, almost. And, and that was kind of the other reason for doing the window boxes, is it gives us a little bit yeah. of something on the outside of the building that's greener. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. All set? Yeah. Um, my only question was about the setback, or the variance in the front that you need. Mm -hmm. um, so 20 is required, and you are proposing 1311? Yes. It looks like you have so much space in back. Why would why would the building just be back so you don't need the Because the farther we push it back, the closer we start getting to this retaining wall that's back here. Oh. And I don't want to get into that retaining wall as the neighbor has stated. It, it's, it, it's fine. It's, we've, we've walked the retaining wall. It's, it's in pretty decent shape. But as he said, the water does come out through it, underneath it. And I don't want to push us back any farther to that. Figure that was going to be <laughs> you know, and there's a, a lot of those, a lot of, there, there's kind of a line of buildings that are pushed right up. It, it sort of holds the line oh, of what's yeah. there. Yeah. We're, we're actually yeah. farther back yeah. than right. any of the ones, ones that yep. go into town. Yeah. And then, and yeah. then obviously, Simon gets I mean, farther back. The old apartments that are right on the side Correct. Of the, the old gold shade. Yeah. 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 That's right on the side of it. Yeah. 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 So um, it'll be more keeping with the neighborhood instead of having it back. There. Right. Right. Um, I think it's going to be a great project. I, I think it looks nice. I like all the differences in the architecture with the shutters and the ornamental stuff. I think it looks really good. Thank you. And you Thank like you. the red roof. And I love the red roof. <laughs> <laughs> I put that in there specifically. Yeah, the red roof. The red roof. Put that in specifically. You are just like either of you even mentioned. I know. Because I'm sitting here waiting for red roof. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that, that's why I appreciate when he's.
Well, I guess one other thing too, and it wouldn't. I mean, is traffic going to be a problem? I mean, there's no traffic now any more than anywhere else. So, downtown when, yeah, when when um, when Peter Hoffman brought us Warren Square, which was the old um, building right on J Street, yeah. that was the question that we asked. And and the traffic studies show. I mean, there's there's one trip a day in and one trip a day out. Right. Is it going to add more? I mean, it really I think depends on what goes in on the on the ground floor. Right. Um, you know, if that becomes a restaurant, yeah, it, it, you know, but it, that would be peak time. You know, but lunch, afternoon to early evening, and then and then done. Um, you know, depending on what goes in there. I don't think the traffic is it. Is it going to increase the traffic on Warren Street to a to a level that's that would be noticeable? <clears throat> I doubt it. I mean, that's a main thoroughfare in and out of the city from the east. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's a busy. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and really, most of the traffic that's on Warren Street is coming up Oakland Avenue, bypassing that part of the city and going east. Right. Um, anything that's from there into the traffic circle is actually going to downtown or coming from downtown. Most of the, the major truck route, anything coming from the south comes up, turns Oakland Avenue, and then up onto Oak Street and back out on the Warren. So yeah, it's not like, really, not really a lot. I feel like on. most people know. I mean, if I, when I take Warren, I go to that way. Absolutely. You know, I mean that's. <laughs> so. I think the best thing is when they put the traffic circle in. I know oh. most most of the older people, or my parents, they, you know, they wouldn't. Don't even hear that, sir. When it was the five corners, yeah. that was always my argument. In the city of Lens Falls, if you don't know how to avoid the five corners, you don't know how to drive in the city of Lens Falls. Because there's no way that you couldn't avoid it, you know, could not be there. But now that the traffic circle's there, I don't see, there is the backup at, at five o'clock when everybody's out of work and everybody's leaving, trying to get to the north way. Right. But it, but it, but it actually, it's a calming. The, and oh, it, yeah. it did exactly what the, the traffic engineer said. It's a traffic calming device, and it does. The traffic keeps moving. You don't have the backups like we used to have when it was the lights, and you had to wait for the lights to change. I mean, you could sit on Glen Street at the five corners waiting for the light to change twice because everybody was in the intersection, and traffic was just stopped. Now at least it just keeps moving. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's thank you. That's so, great. as I said, we do have to go to the zoning board. That's March 18th, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The 18th. Monday. So we'll be we'll be in front of them, yeah. and then we'll have our stuff designed pending us, you know, getting an approval there. Um, we'll be back in front of you for probably. April. Thank you. We hope. We're, like I said, we're working on stormwater management. We're working on lighting getting those things squared away. I think once that's done, we'll be ready to submit for final review and approval. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Thank you. What's up? So I know, I know he reached out, I know he reached out to PJ and talked to him. 
Um, there was, in 2007, uh, a site plan review that was done for the body shop. That, and, and, a, and a permit that was issued for the body shop. And that's, that was, I think, the biggest bone of contention is that that portion was, is, is a body shop that was not approved, when apparently it is. And Frank has the documentation that shows that he was here, it was approved, a building permit was issued, and, and they went ahead with the project. I'm sorry, I, 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 I did go on Saturday, but I didn't continue to discuss that. You did? Okay. So, um, I think that was one of the concerns. Yep. Um, I think PJ was also concerned with the buffer. It was, you know, yeah, so now, now there's something that says that, that they're looking at now that says between uh, an industrial use and a residential use, even though it's even though the residential use is in the, the light industrial zone, there's meant to be a buffer between the two of 15 feet, which hasn't been adhered to. So there may be an enforcement action there that we can look at. Again, I know that I, I know that um, Snow and Ice Man, North American Snow and Ice Management has their new facility out on Big Bay Road. Um, but they just, they're not allowed for whatever, they haven't gotten the approval yet to put their salt storage oh, shed out there. That's the big thing. That's, I think, that's the issue. And I, and I think that that's, I know they're working their way through the town of Queensbury before that. Um, and it's, I, I believe it will be handled and eventually that portion goes away as well. Yeah, that's which, right. which will be to everybody's liking. Okay. Got that? Anything else? No? Then I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting of 5 March 2024. Thank you, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.